Hi everybody, I'm Melinda Gallant and I want to welcome you to another Cape Conversations. Oh my gosh, we're in a beautiful spot and talking about a very serious subject. It's serious because we all need to know about it, but it's also in a beautiful place and we talk about why beautiful places are so important in our lives. So come along, let's have another Cape Conversation. Hi everybody, I am here today talking about a very serious subject with somebody I've known for, gosh, quite a long time now. And she is the executive director of NAMI, which is the National Alliance of Mental Illness, Cape Cod and the Islands. Jackie Lane, Jackie, so nice to see you. Well, welcome to my garden, Melinda. I know, well, you know, we wanted someplace peaceful. And you couldn't find anything more peaceful than this. This is just gorgeous. Well, gorgeous. thank you. It's an amateur endeavor. We're not professionals, but it's been kind of a labor of love. And it falls in very nicely with NAMI, which, as you said, is a very serious subject. Yes. But I believe that part of being, dealing with a serious subject on a daily basis is keeping a balanced life. Well, that's true. And my balance is in the garden. Well, it, th what a great thing to say. Now tell me, Jackie, how did you get started? The last time you and I really worked together mm -hmm. actually on some nonprofit things was at Heritage Museums and yes. Gardens. And then we worked a little bit with the Heart Association and mm -hmm. the Winnie Foundation, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. So, oh my gosh, how did you get involved in this? Uh, when my husband retired, which was about five years ago, mm -hmm. I decided to take all the knowledge I'd had between business, because I have a business background mm -hmm. in my first life, my teaching background, which was my very first life, uh -huh. and all the nonprofit stuff I had done here, board mm -hmm. work and so on, here and in Boston, and put it together and do a fairly informal consulting business geared at a reasonable price for small not-for-profits that can't hire a full-time development director, a full-time marketing person, or any of those things. And uh, NAMI became accidentally one of my clients, and then through a whole series of things, I eventually became the executive director. But I had a particular interest in NAMI because my younger brother, only sibling, has suffered from schizophrenic dis um, dysfective order and also bipolar disorder oh. since the age of 20. And I, NAMI in northern New York was helpful for me at times after my parents died when I tried to get services and things for him. Sure, sure. So I'm, was the idea was paying NAMI back. <laughs> right, well, for how wonderful. Good stuff that they had done for my family. Right. Well, now what is NAMI doing for Cape Cod and the Islands? And what, what, what is your, your mission here? Our mission is to educate, support, and advocate. And we do all three. We have a staff now. NAMI has only had an executive director for about four years now. Mm -hmm. And I'm the second executive director. And I'm the first one that's really built a staff. Mm -hmm. And we educate, we give courses that are developed by NAMI National with mm -hmm. professionals. We all, and those courses are free and open to everyone. We charge no one anything for anything. Oh, wow. We're totally, we get our, we do our fundraising and then we give back mm -hmm. to the community, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Support, uh, we have a part-time person that takes support calls. Actually, we all take support calls at mm -hmm. the office. People call in that have issues and we try to help them solve them. We try to connect people with services. And we but try, you're not a hotline. No, we are not a hotline. We always say we're not 24 hours. We deal mostly with families rather than the person that's mentally I ill see. themselves. Yeah. And that's kind of a niche. I don't know that many organizations that really cater to families and try right. to help families be right. educated and to get services. Maybe Al-Anon might be a, a, a Al -Anon similar. Al-Anon is similar for alcoholism, yes, right, or right. addiction. Right. Uh, then we do advocacy. We have a attorney who has been experienced all her life and has retired from Washington to here and East Ham actually, and she works for us 10 hours a week. She keeps track of all the legislation having to do with mental health on Beacon Hill and in Wonderful. Washington. 
and she also gives a certain amount of legal advice on guardianships, Rogers laws, HIPAA's, HIPAA laws, and mm -hmm. all of those things free of charge to people we refer to her. I see. Wow. So it's education, support, and advocacy. Absolutely. Now is, um, I, and I don't, I don't know that there's a correlation, but because of the opioid crisis, is is and it's here on the Cape. It's everywhere, right. obviously, but. Uh, is it sometimes because of mental health issues that people get involved yes. in that, besides you, addiction? Okay, if you want to count stress, anxiety, and depression as mental health issues, which they certainly are, right. I would say 80% of addiction has to do with mental health. I see, I see. And so, so when you, when somebody calls, a family calls, <clears throat> and let's say you pick up the phone, mm -hmm. and they say, you know, I've got a, 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 a child who mm -hmm. is, uh, won't come out of the room, yep. um, they're uh, morose, uh, they're talking about, they talk about suicide, mm -hmm. but they, they've locked their doors, they won't mm -hmm. let us in. Um, what, what do you tell them? Where, do, where would you point? I mean, how do you point them? How do you All right. counsel it, them, I okay. guess? Okay, it depends on the situation. If they feel there's definitely a suicidal tendency, then we would ask them to call the police department in their area. And we have been able to, we do CCIT training. Which is? Community Crisis Intervention Team. And what that is, is a training course for police and other resources oh, wow. to work together. And we have had people trained. We did our first big training last uh, January, February. Mm -hmm. And it was a, it's a 40 hour training and it teaches the police officers about mental illness, how to handle mentally ill people, what some of the services are, how to get someone into the hospital, what the alternative services are, and all those things. And we have all these presenters from the other services. So it's a really good, it's bringing the police into the loop because the police are now social service workers. Right. A huge right. percentage of their calls right. Right. are basically mental right. health or behavioral health issues. We also have the whole homeless issue in Hyannis. Now every police department with the exception of one sent people to that training. Should we ask who the one was? If you want to. Well I hate sure. To say it, but they're going to be in the next one okay. which we're having in All right. November. Well, who was it out of curiosity? Sandwich. There you go. There you go. But they it, don't have problems here. No. But <laughs> well, you live in this is in Sagamore, so yes, this we're, is just in across, Sagamore. we're just across but, the line. Uh, Chief All Wack, those but Chief Wack did say that the reason he didn't is he didn't because you see the program is totally free. We fund right. it for the police department. Oh my gosh. But the, so it doesn't cost the town anything. Yes it does because they oh. have to do the overtime for the officers. Oh, That's the I kicker see. for yeah. them. So. And Wax said that he didn't have the overtime, but he is going to be involved sure. in the one we're doing in November and December. Oh, well, that'll be good. But we'll the long and that. short of it is that we have names of police officers in every town that have been trained. So we can say to a client, if you need to call the police, call the dispatcher and tell them the situation, tell them it's a mental health issue, and they should ask for a person that has had CCIT training in the department, and tell them that Jackie Lane or NAMI advised that. So that's one thing, if there's really, they feel right. very, very stressed. The other thing, we do have, a, there are a few child psychologists and counselors and mm -hmm. therapists on the Cape, not mm -hmm. all that many. We do have a child psychiatrist on our board of directors. Oh, wow. And. Uh, then also we can recommend them to go to Cape Cod Healthcare um, and they have, unfortunately, they have to go through the emergency room yeah. and it's very hard to get mental health through the emergency room because the emergency room people aren't particularly trained in mental health. No, they're trained yeah. for broken arms and yes, gunshot and, wounds. Yes, and <laughs> heart like attacks that. and right, accidents right. and things like that. So we do have a direct line to Cape Cod Behavioral Health Unit. Oh. And in fact, the clinical director of that unit is on our board of directors. So I can call her cell phone and say, we have advised so-and-so to bring so-and-so into the ER, E D E R, right, right, right. and could you watch out for them because I really think they need a psych evaluation. So those are things. Now we also have 
this new crisis line, which is um, really replacing the Department of Mental Health Crisis Center, which doesn't exist now. It's been sent out, well, it's been... Well, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. So there was a Department of... The Department of Mental Health did have a crisis line. Which was statewide? Yeah, it okay. is statewide, but there were people on the Cape. But what happened now, it's been outsourced, like everything else yeah. in government these days, and it's being run through Boston Medical Center. So depending on your health insurance, and that's a whole nother story, if you have Medicaid, if you have Mass Health, if you have Mass Health of certain ones through the connector, but not all, then you qualify for this service. So you call Boston Medical Center, they have a dispatcher, and they make a determination, as a clinician, as a dispatcher, they make a determination if they need to send a clinician to whatever site you're at. And you can call, the police can call, and supposedly within an hour, this is how it's supposed to work, and it's not working that way yet. I see. Within an hour, a clinician is supposed to be on site, and then the clinician will determine if this person needs to be admitted somewhere, if they need to go straight to the hospital, or if they need a bed somewhere, and then right. they will start a bed search, which is a whole nother thing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So is there a place on the Cape where if somebody has a meltdown, mm -hmm. which I might at any minute. <laughs> I uh, thought of it. <laughs> so is there some place on the Cape where people can go? I mean, let's... They can drop into, there is a crisis center that's run again by this new service, I and see. that's over in Independence Park. I see, I see. But th there isn't a hospital where they would send you. You, you on the Cape? No, you either go to the Falmouth Hospital Emergency Room or Cape Cod Healthcare Emergency Room. Do they have a place within the hospital where people who might want to threaten themselves are put? Okay, for lack what, of a better term? what they do is they have an evaluation. If uh -huh. they determine the person truly needs acute care, right. They, depending on the type of insurance, they have what's called the purple zone, and that's sort of a holding area, a quiet area within the emergency room that they can stay, and it's called boarding. You stay until they can find a bed for you, like at Pocasset. Oh, there is a place at Pocasset. There's Pocasset, yeah. Pocasset has, I think it's about 20 beds. And then, it is, or it they, is, what is that though? What, what's it called at Pocasset? Does it have a name? Just Pocasset? We call it Pocasset. Oh, okay. It's a mental health center oh, run by DMH, center. Department oh, okay. of Mental Health. All right. They might be admitted to Cape Cod Healthcare. There's like 15 beds in the Behavioral Health Center okay. at Hyannis, not in Falmouth, right. in Hyannis. And then there are other places like High Point. There's other hospitals. Uh, Pembroke has a mental health unit. And then there's Worcester, which is the Cadillac of mental health units here. But unfortunately, 80% of the beds at Worcester are forensic. So it doesn't leave much room for... What does that mean, forensic? Forensic means people that have criminal. Oh, okay. So they're, they've really done something bad. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So it's hard to find a bed. First of all, it's hard to get through the emergency process. Secondly, it's hard to find a bed. Then it's hard to keep somebody there because unless you have a commitment order, a person chooses to be I see. committed and can leave any time. Right, right. So from a family or a parent's point of view, or the other um, thing we get are elderly parents with adult people still adult. living with them that have mental health issues. Those are our two big calls. Oh my gosh. And it's very hard to get people in a place and have them stay there. So it's very sure. frustrating. That's why gardening is so good, because if I came <laughs> home and thought about this you, all the time, in I'd be in Bocasset. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, well, I guess my question is, though, what, with, y with you as executive director, um, where do you see this going, though? I mean, obviously, we're in such a health care crisis we right are. now in many ways, and it doesn't matter what your affiliation with uh, party-wise or yeah. independent whatever right. we're in a health care crisis mm -hmm. um where how how do you see maybe nami fitting into all this and helping well first of all we advocate uh -huh. and we advocate on a national level in fact the national convention was in washington 
at, I think it was the end of June, I didn't go, but they t sent a thousand people to Capitol Hill Wonderful. to talk about sure. the Senate bill. Right. And uh, we pick it, we Which go I to Which I believe does not have any mental health in it, does not it? Not much. Yeah, I didn't think so. And then uh, we, uh, Mary goes to hearings all the time. We're in the process of training some of our clients to testify mm -hmm. and to keep someone's attention and what the salient sure. points are. Sure. Um, also, I see us as a big connector with the community mm -hmm. because mental health has always had a stigma. Well, yeah. You know, yeah. and mental health is health. The brain is like anything else. It's any other part of the body. I mean, as I said, mental health is health, just right. like heart health is health. Right, right. So connecting people with the community, the education courses, we're also going into the schools. We got a wonderful grant from the Tower Foundation, $90,000 wow. just recently, and we can present Think Kids which is a collaborative problem-solving program done by Mass General Hospital and Harvard University in every one of the school districts on the Cape for all Wonderful. personnel, not oh. for the kids. This no, is a toolbox for so teachers. They can figure so they out can this. figure out how to deal with children that are exhibiting learning and behavioral health issues. So that's a biggie. You're making those connections. We have a basics program for parents. Mm -hmm. We have family to family, which is is a shared experience type mm -hmm. program and it's taught by people who have a mentally ill person in their family who have been trained to teach and it's a 12-week program mm -hmm. and the people bond it's for mm -hmm. like 18 to 20 people and they realize you are not alone that's right. our mantra you are not alone and anyone that tells me that they don't know anyone or have anyone in their family that has a serious mental health issue is either in deep denial or they're lying through their teeth. Right. Because right. mental health issues uh, affect they, at least 25 percent of the population. And they range the gamut. They from, do all the that, way, from just being oh god I'm, a I'm bit down blue, to over being the top. Not, yes, over the top, hearing voices, being right. dysfunctional totally. Right. And they also there's situational depression as mm -hmm. opposed to deep organic depression sure, too. Sure. And situational depression, and that's one of the things we are dealing with. We're big collaborators. We're trying to collaborate with a ton of people. We just um, helped open the um, Diabetes Resource Center yes, 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 at yes. the Y. With Roger Ludwig. L Roger Ludwig, that yep. was his dream, <clears throat> to have a free service for people whose family members of themselves have been diagnosed with either type 1 or type, type 2, two. Uh -huh. or pre-diabetic to get free information and free services. So we're a little different than the one he opened in Naples because we decided with the collaboration with NAMI, we're calling the, the whole person approach. So we're dealing with is, mental health as well as physical health. See, this is what I don't understand about medicine. It's always in, been in, here. in it's silos. Always, right. And it's your leg. Then yeah. it's just your leg. And then it the doesn't death. matter if the leg's connected to the hip bone, connected to whatever, you know? Yeah. And with diabetes, there's a huge correlation between depression and diabetes. Sure, sure. And some of it is drug related. And if you're diagnosed with diabetes and told you've got to change your whole lifestyle, that can be a big sure. mental. Sure. shock yeah, too. Yeah, can. Absolutely. So we will be doing, we're working on a program, we're collaborating with a couple of doctors at Cape Cod Healthcare. One is a GP, the mm -hmm. other is a um, psychiatrist, and working to put together, again, like a 10 or 12 week program that wonderful. would be free. Oh, wonderful. And it could be on the road too, it doesn't have to be done sure. at the Y. Sure. So, no, we've got a ton of stuff going, and uh, I just feel that getting out in the community, if we hit every teacher right. and every cop on the Cape, that's done a lot to right. normalize mental health issues and make right. people aware. Well, you know, <laughs> my mother was from the South. Yes. So everybody in the South has a crazy somebody. Yes, they do. You know? Here too, uh, we just don't talk about it. Right, but you never talked about no, it. No, it was no. This, I mean, so and, there, so. and my father had a um, a cousin who, when he would drive in the driveway in Ohio, he was from Indiana, driving the drive. My mother would go, "Oh, how? <laughs> it's your cousin." Yes. You know, he's here. He's and here. He, and then my father would say, "Gladine, he's the one with the plate in his head from the war." So <laughs> you know, and I mean, the poor guy, you know, yeah. uh, but he was kooky. 
yeah. there's just no doubt about it. And of course, we use those terms. I just use the term crazy. I just mm -hmm. use the term kooky. You know. Um, so you're right. Everybody has a something. They do. And and I love those folks who say never, not in my family. That's crazy. They're <laughs> That's the ones crazy. that are crazy. <laughs> and it's as interesting. You mentioned the plate in the head from the war type thing because PTSD is oh, another biggie. We have twenty eight thousand veterans on the Cape, and we are working to get Home Front, which is a veterans program for right. families of veterans, that would be an educational program. Um, Yesterday, I went to see the last performance of a play at Katuit Center for the Arts called Grounded. Mm -hmm. A one-woman play, one-actor play, uh, about a, pi a woman pilot, which I believe it's based on a true story. I might be exaggerating, but I don't think so. About a woman pilot who was a fighter pilot mm -hmm. and went home and met a man, and they ended up getting married and having a child, and so they re-stationed her to the States. And she was a drone pilot then where you go into this little hut, you know, that's air conditioned mm -hmm. in the desert, and you look at a screen 12 and hours a day, 12, 12 hours a day, and they're 12 hours ahead, and you kill people. And she literally went bonkers, yeah. and to the point where she, she was supposed to do something and she couldn't. So they court-martialed her and they put her in, in prison because she didn't do her duty, derelict of duty, right? And I thought she was, she went off the edge and her husband could see her going off the edge. Mm -hmm. Her fellow people who were working with her, you knew, knew she, knew she was going off the edge and nobody said anything. Well, I don't think the military has always been terribly sympathetic to mental health issues perhaps. I will say that I'm finding being out in the community, and I'm all over now, is that people are getting much more sensitive to the reality well, of mental health issues. And the opiate, that's one thing, opiate, right. the opiate addiction thing is a double-edged sword for mental illness. One, it's taking an awful lot of money away from mental right. illness, because everybody, that's the course du jour. But right. cause du jour. But the other thing is, it's also brought a lot of emphasis onto mental wellness. Right. Right. So it's a it is a double edged sword. Well, and the other thing though is what what was amazing to me that people around her, her husband, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and and her colleagues, um, they knew you could tell from her one sided mm -hmm. conversation mm -hmm. they could see something was happening, and yet they didn't do anything to help her. Yeah. And, and I guess that's what I'm, I'm kind of getting at here. How do you know when to say something? How do you know, as a parent, let's say, how do you know, okay, fine, your kid locks himself in the room and gets weird. They're teenagers. You could just say they're teenagers. That's one of the problems, <laughs> because now we're working more on early diagnosis, and usually people be at, for SMI, serious mental illness, are yeah. diagnosed around the age of 20, uh -huh. and they probably could have been diagnosed earlier and have been right. showing symptoms, but a lot of it's blamed on being teenagers and right. hormonal well, stuff and all of that. You so had a teenager. You, yeah. Right? How, how uh, you, you know, yeah, I had three of them. Yeah, you had three, that's right, you had three of them, I have three of them. Yeah. They were teenagers. Yes, you know. they're teenagers, and there is a lot of issues, but at this point, we would recommend that if you have any doubts, look for therapy, look, and the other thing that, I mean, this is something that really drives me nuts, mm -hmm. and this is the whole electronic thing. These kids are not going out and developing, they're not talking to each other oh, like know. we're talking to each other. They're all yeah. the time. Yeah. They're not going out, they're not hanging out and doing stuff. Right. And so there's a lot more room for isolation. Right. And I don't think their communication skills are what, I mean, you know, how much can you, how many thoughts can you put in, and we won't go into who texts, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean that type of thing. Right, this, right. And even teachers, talking to teachers, they're saying children's brains are changing. Oh, sure. Oh, and sure. we are, another thing we're doing is we, I just at last, I think it was Wednesday, I was at um, the children's place of Cape Cod. Oh, sure. Out yeah. there, and we were talking about trying to put together a program that would go with preschool because we're talking more and more about getting mental health and behavioral health issues when children are young. The right. younger the better. And we're looking at Head Start. So the big thing with NAMI is to be out there in the community, to be advocating, to be 
supporting the people that need our support, families especially, and to be educating the public. And if I wanted to either give to NAMI as a, just an individual, or I wanted to do something, I don't know, for NAMI, what could I do and how would I do it? Okay, our website, which I think you have all the information. I do, right here in yes. the handy dandy packet. <laughs> <laughs> you can go on our website. We can, you can donate over the web. If you want to um, help out with our golf event, that's our major fundraiser. And when is it? That is September 11th. It's Excellent. always the Monday after Labor Day. Excellent. It's at Oyster Harbors. It is Excellent. the creme de la creme. I, if it's at Oyster Harbors, <laughs> just to get on the course, you have to be the creme de la creme. But anyway, we always fill the field and we do a fund to need. We also, if you don't golf, you can come for the dinner. You'll find that on our website Wonderful. and registrations on our website also. And there are volunteer opportunities too. Excellent. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, you know what? I knew this would be like reconnecting. We haven't seen each other for a while. Well, you've been going one direction, I've been yeah. going another direction. In fact, I work with one of your supporters. I work with Paul Grover. Yes, of yes. course. Yes, because I work for Robert Paul Properties yes. as a realtor in my spare time. Mm -hmm. Robert Paul is one of our biggest sponsors of our I know they are. They, they believe tournament. in your cause, they for do. sure. They really, really believe in your cause. Um, but I want to thank you today, and I want to thank you for allowing us to be in this beautiful spot. Oh my God, it's gorgeous, gorgeous. Well, I do wish more people would do this kind of thing because I think it would help with their mental health and stress and depression. I, I think you're right. Although I'm looking around here and you say you're not a professional. No. And I look at all the edging and there are no weeds and I'm thinking. Well, I have a full-time gardener now that my husband's was retired. retired. <laughs> I do you know he's listening to this <laughs> but I but I I'm out here really I mean I'm dirty knee deep in weeds too yeah Building where do you find walls. the time well I work base uh, supposedly yeah. four days a week okay well that gives you a couple then to, yeah. to do the gardening stuff yeah. but I also know you have fun too oh yes yeah because you have a, a granddaughter I have a granddaughter we have school. other hobbies too yeah which is fabulous fabulous so. fabulous good well, thank you so much. Well, thank you, Melinda. It's been fun. It has been fun. We need to do this again. We'll need to do a follow-up in, in a couple of months or something. All right. All right, we'll see how that golf tournament went. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, thank you to Jackie Lane. Wasn't she terrific? Executive Director of NAMI. Oh my gosh, what an important subject. And you know, we all have been a little blue once in a while. We all have our ups and downs. But isn't it wonderful to know that we have a resource right here on Cape Cod that can help us out if we get a little too ups and downs and a little too blue. So I want to thank you for joining me today and I'll look for you again the next time when we have another Cape Conversations.